Good afternoon, everyone. I am Siddharth Aluwalia, Business Unit Leader and FCAS Manager at Normac Verifavia, and we welcome you to our LinkedIn Live event on FCAS regulation and compliance. <laughs> During the course of this presentation, we will dive deeper into the FCAS reporting and verification requirements. We shall discuss how you can mitigate compliance risks and avoid penalties. We hope to equip you with the knowledge in order to face the FCAS regulations with utmost confidence. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to our panelists for today. We have with us Mr. David Palumbo, Managing Director Consulting Limited. He has been a pioneer. We also have with us Akshay Kumar, lead FCAS verifier with Normac Verifavia. We at Normac Verifavia hold expertise in providing FCAS independent verification to multiple clients for EU and GB. <laughs> Feel free to drop in your questions. Uh, we will be happy to address them during the course of the presentation itself or get back to you post the event. So without further delay, let me hand over the floor to our panelist. Akshay, over to you. Thank you, Siddharth, for the introduction. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. So without further ado, let's dive into our today's topic, avoiding FGAS compliance pitfalls. As we all know that under current FGAS regulation, any business or industry in European Union or Great Britain that is dealing with the fluorinated gases has to first acquire the quota and subsequently make imports while making sure that there is enough quota for all the activity that is to be performed in that year. As you can see on the next screen, some of the facts and figures related to the EU targets pertaining to the emissions in general and FGAS regulation in particular. As decided by the EU, they have set a target of 55% reduction in GHG emissions by the year 2030. And pertaining to the F gas domain, they have further decreased the HFC quota from 79 to 89% by the year 2030. Now let's talking about the non-compliance consequences. It may result in penalties, including fines and even the suspension of quotas. The European Commission can also publish the names of the non-compliance companies. The fines for non-compliance are calculated based on the seriousness of the infringement and the size of the company. The fines can range from a minimum of 100 euros to a maximum of 1 million euros. The competent authorities, the member state, are responsible for determining the amount of the fine. As per a recent report made by the Cooling Post, in England alone, penalties ranging from a thousand pounds to a maximum of two thousand two hundred thousand have been imposed by the environmental agency on 41 companies since the European FGAS regulation passed into the GB law post Brexit. Having said that, the potential pitfalls that could lead to non-compliance are caused either due to rushing at deadlines leading to reporting errors in reporting procedures or having data deficiencies, data misstatements within the organization. So our recommendation would be to always maintain precise and transparent records pertaining to any FGAS activities throughout the year. We're coming to the next slide where we can assist you with the preparation of verification report. As according to the regulation, submission of the FGAS report is accompanied by an independent verification report. The FGAS verification process typically includes the following steps. Gathering relevant documentation, where we ga gather all the relevant documents pertaining to the FGAS activity. And the next step would be document verification. We will verify all the documents to ensure the completeness of the data. The next step is the compliance check where we check whether all the documents are complying with all the legality of the regulation, safety and quality. 
Next is inspection. We conduct physical or virtual inspections wherever necessary to verify the actual condition of compliance of asset facilities or the processes that are reported by the entity. Next is non-conformity identification. Any discrepancies, deviations or non-compliance issues are identified. And the last but not the least is the verification report preparation. We, we prepare the verification report that summarizes the findings of the verification process, including a clear and concise description of the results, highlighting areas of compliance and non-compliance. We at Verifabia will serve as your verification partner in your journey towards regulatory compliance. Moving forward, let's discuss the upcoming updates in the regulation that will be coming this year by mid 2024. To align with the European Green Deal and European climate law, which has set the goal of climate neutrality by 2050, the new regulation aims to reduce the amount of F gases placed on the market by 98% by 2050. There is going to be a tougher phase down of refrigerants in the future, increase in penalty prices, standardizing them across the EU, and comprehensive monitoring of the reported data. Coming to the next slide. Why Verifabia? So, providing explanation, we have 10 plus years of experience in ETS and decarbonization. We have verified 180 plus F gas reports. Currently, we have 65 plus clients under F gas verification. We are also collaborating with 8 plus carbon management solution platforms. We also have a team of 50 plus subject matter experts. So for any further requests, queries, here you can see some of our clients that are already in our verification. They're already in contact with us for the verification. And I would also like to request for any queries or any requests that you have with us at Verifabia, please reach out to us at insights at the rate verifabia.com. I would like, I would further like to request Mr. David to enlighten us further regarding the F gas reporting in particular and C band reporting, which is the hot topic these days. Over to you, Mr. David. Can you hear me? Hi, um, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for uh, thinking about uh, arranging this session about topics which are very important. Uh, as you were mentioning, uh, compliance uh, is uh, something that is very difficult to, to handle. Um, and one of the reasons why we decided to, to join in these activities is to reach out to, to as many as possible to make sure that everybody understands that there is a hand available in case you need it uh, to be compliant and to have the preparatory work which then enables to have a smooth audit and a successful one with a positive outcome. Um, one of the reasons for this presentation is to introduce also Navis and the services that we are providing and not everybody knows it, but we have a very strong background in compliance and I have personally worked with DG Clima to implement the customs controls at European level. So uh, we have a solid background from, from the compliance point of view, so you can feel confident when you, when you reach out for our help. Can we move to the next slide? Um, we are a young company. Clearly, we were uh, launched not so, long, not so long ago. We don't have the same history of Verifavia in terms of uh, presence on the market, but nevertheless, the people that are working with uh, Navis have experience in the sectors, and they go a long way uh, since uh, the implementation of the FGAS regulation, not only the version 2, which is the one that is currently in place, soon to be replaced by the version 3, but also with the version 1. Um, 
some things that people don't know is that uh, there are so many sectors affected by the F-gas and even more affected by the CBAM, the other regulation on which we will touch base later on. Um, solar, for example, uh, the solar industry, uh, companies that are producing solar panels, uh, they, these are the uh, kind of uh, company that were not aware to be in the scope of the regulation, but they are because they need to cool down the batteries where they store the energy generated or captured by the solar panels. Uh, medical instruments also have uh, these uh, uh, requirements and so forth. And uh, you probably start to see on the right that there is a UF gas legislation and GBF gas legislation. We will touch base on this one a little bit later on because it's also important to understand that since the since Brexit, uh, two different quota systems have been created. One that covers Great Britain, and Great Britain is only England, Scotland and Wales, not Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. And uh, then there is the European FGAS regulation, which is the U27 member states plus Northern Ireland. Uh, we can move to the next slide. Uh, as I was mentioning earlier on, we offer a very large amount of services. Um, we can help with the consulting for the FCAS regulation, um, procedures, controls, everything that would make then the audit process uh, smoother and leaner, as I was mentioning earlier on. We are also a listed incumbent company, both in the EU and in Great Britain. Therefore, we are able to supply quota to our clients if they need it. And because we are an incumbent company, we can also supply HFCs if it's required. Um, we probably are starting to be noticed because whoever is looking at the list of incumbent companies will, will have probably noticed that there are many companies represented by Navis. And that's because we offer only representation services to a very large number of companies which are non-regional. So non-European companies for Europe, non-GB companies for Great Britain, and, and so forth. So I don't want to take too much time in introducing these things. We can move to the next slide. Um, I thought that it would be good to provide some top line information about uh, the um, GWP, the, the tons of CO2 equivalent and so forth, because still today we see companies that are reaching out because they need to understand how many tons of CO2 equivalent they need for their business to make sure that they are compliant and so forth. Um, the way that the whole system works is based on the concept of the global warming potential, GWP, that's what it means. And GWP is uh, different refrigerant by refrigerant. You can see in the chart at the right that there are some planet killers with the GWP of 14,800 and some more uh, environmental friendly ones like uh, the HFC 41, which is a GWP only on 92. So depending on the refrigerants that you are using, uh, your products have a different environmental impact. And this is the ABC of the regulation. And through the GWP, it's possible to calculate how many tons of CO2 equivalent are required for the import of the refrigerant. We can move to the next slide. And this is what I was mentioning earlier on from the date of Brexit, January the 1st, 2021, two separate quota systems have been implemented. This is because UK, after the uh, leave from the European Union, I was mentioned earlier on by Akshay, uh, adopted the European regulation as, uh, as law. And therefore, the same set of rules uh, applies, even though there are some small differences that are, coming, that are becoming more and more noticeable uh, going forward because the UK government is taking some different approach. Right. In, in certain aspects of, of the regulatory environment. So very important takeaway from this slide is that England, Scotland and Wales is one region, Northern Ireland and the European 27 member states, that's another region. So everything that moves between these two regions has to have the local quota. And as uh, 
Akshay and uh, Sid were mentioning earlier on, they are able to provide auditing services in both regions because they have the necessary qualifications. So they can be a point of reference just as now is for the compliance to verify that your activities are compliant and to meet the deadlines for the, the, the reporting. We can move to the next slide. Uh, I was mentioning earlier on the function of the only representative, so companies that are not uh, resident in the region can rely on an only representative to help them with the compliance for the FGAS. So for example, if uh, uh, an American company needs to import their equipment uh, in the uh, European Union, they can do that using an only representative that takes the ownership of the compliance uh, towards the FGAS regulation. And the same applies if the UK company wants to work in the European Union, if a European Union company wants to work in Great Britain and so forth. So everything that is not established locally can, can operate locally using an only representative, which is an established company in the territory. We can move to the next slide. Um, this is probably one slide which everybody should have printed and kept handy because there's a lot of confusion about the different types of quota that are needed for the different types of business. There is uh, the quota which is released by the European government. It is obtained uh, based on the past activities uh, or is requested to a yearly uh, application and that quota can only be used to import bulk gas. What is it, bulk gas? Bulk gas is everything that is not inside a piece of equipment that works on its own. So if I am importing air conditioning units and they contain refrigerant, this is not bulk desk. If I am importing uh, a cylinder containing refrigerant, in that case, that's bulk gas. So it's important to have this clear separation between what type of business requires which type of gas. So what's on the left is only for everything which is inside a cylinder, a tondrums, an isotank. And what's on the right is everything that comes inside a functioning piece of equipment, uh, refrigeration, air conditioning, lasers, even cars or um, uh, industrial vehicles, they are pre-charged equipment from the regulatory point of view, because if they have an air conditioning inside, most likely they work with HFCs and therefore they require quota. And Linking back to what was early mentioned by Akshay, uh, that there are penalties and so forth, the UK government has a, a, a special section which is open to the public uh, where everybody can see the list of the companies that have um, uh, been in breach of the FCAS regulation and the penalties which have been applied to these companies. And I invite you to look for it because uh, it's it's really interesting and scary at the same time because you can see that very large names have been exposed to fines because they probably underestimated uh, the impact of Brexit, uh, not understanding clearly that there are two separate quota systems and so forth and so forth. So important differences between the quota. As of today, the quota is uh, released on a free of charge basis by the local government. So UK released the quota for GB, uh, DG Clima released the quota for the EU. Starting uh, with the new uh, regulation, there will be a fee to pay in the European Union of three euro per ton of CO2 equivalent. So this is something new introduced by the FGAS regulation. So something to take into account and to know when you are dealing with the acquisition of quota or uh, purchase of gas because this three euro um, kind of you uh, can call it indirect tax uh, will be reflected in the price of the quota and the price of the refrigerant. Uh, the quota that is released for the import of bulk gas has one year validity. This is very important so you cannot carry it over into the next year if you don't use it. And then we move to the right. There are authorizations and delegations. 
you can imagine an arrow that goes left to right. So a quota can become authorization, authorization can become delegations. It doesn't go the other way around. And authorizations, they need to be acquired from a quota holder, just like delegations, and they never expire. That's the good news. So if you buy authorizations or delegations, they can sit on your account for as long as you uh, need them or until you have fully consumed them. So that's why this chart is very important because it aims to give some clarity on the different types of quota because we see many companies coming to me and say, sorry, I got a penalty, but I have the quota. And then you realize that they have the wrong type of quota. So we can move to the next slide. And this is uh, uh, more verifiable territory because these are the deadlines for the reporting and auditing obligations with the thresholds. Now, if uh, you are importing bulk gas, reminding cylinders, tundrums, isotanks, not equipment. Uh, in that case, you have a threshold of 100 tons of CO2 equivalent. And uh, the reporting, if you reach the threshold, is uh, the 31st of March of the following year. And in terms of uh, threshold for the audit, it's 10,000 tons of CO2 equivalent. So if a company is importing less than 10,000 tons of CO2 equivalent uh, in one year, that company does not require the audit, the verification, but the moment the company hits the threshold of 10,000 tons in one year, automatically uh, Verifabia is required to step in to do the verification on what has been uh, done through the year. If we move at the line at the bottom, this is uh, the uh, equipment to pre-charge with HFCs, and uh, the threshold to have the quota is the same, is 100 tons of CO2 equivalent, to just like for the bulk. Mm -hmm. The reporting deadline is exactly the same, the 31st of March. And here for the equipment, there is something a little bit uh, funny in the regulation because the reporting is required only if you hit the 500 tons of CO2 equivalent in one year. So if you have exceeded the threshold of 100 tons, you need the audit, but you don't need the reporting up until you reach the threshold of 500 tons. We strongly recommend that the moment that you hit the threshold of 100 tons, you also do the reporting because you still need to uh, quantify how many tons of CO2 equivalent you're consumed and the report helps in that in that in the specific point. And when we look at the auditing deadline, for the first line, the deadline is the 30th of June, while for the first one, the deadline is the 31st of March. Now, if you do the report on the 31st of March and on the same day you need to present the audit, it becomes a little bit complicated and I can already see Siddharth smiling <laughs> because we see some of these cases and believe me, it's a kind of mission impossible. So you have uh, two uh, super uh, human beings uh, on the other side that are trying to deliver the, the and, uh, and help us to upload the verification report by the set deadline, which is the 31st of March by midnight in the European Union, according to CET time zone. So we can move to the next slide. Um, there is uh, something that it's good to know. Uh, there are two different types of companies that hold quota. Uh, one type of company is called incumbent. This company have a history of trading with HFCs and therefore they can authorize the quota without any problem. Some other companies are new entrants and in the current regulation, they can also authorize quota with the condition that they also sell gas, but with the new regulation, new entrants won't be able to authorize quota anymore. So, if uh, you are negotiating with a new entrant, uh, the acquisition of authorizations, heads up, because they might not be in a position to actually supply authorizations to you. So this is a very important point 
to consider when you are dealing with the quota holders. You need to understand their status and what they can or cannot do for you. We can move to the next uh, slide. Uh, it was mentioned earlier on that the UK government is uh, uh, starting to issue high fines, and this is an example of what is happening if a company is in breach. The UK government uh, has implemented three different types of penalties. One is uh, an administrative penalties, which can be between 1,000 and 10,000 pounds. And uh, this applies to companies that are in breach of reporting deadlines, of uh, auditing deadlines and so forth. There is a threshold of 200,000 pounds if you are in breach of the regulation itself, importing without quote and so forth. And there is an additional penalty of 25 pounds per ton of CO2 equivalent. If you are in excess of your allowance, each ton of CO2 equivalent equals 25 pounds of penalty. Uh, we can move to the next slide because we need to also to be conscious of the timing. These are the key changes in the European regulation. Some were already mentioned by Akshay. The threshold is moved by from 79 to 89%, so there's less quota available on the market. There are the three uh, payment which are introduced in the European Union, not yet in UK. And there is a brand new category which has been added to the quota system, which is MDI, meter dose inhalers. Those are the sprays for people who suffer from asthma. As in the current regulation, for example, those were exempt going forward, they will be in the quota system and they will take away from the portfolio 10,000 tons of 10 million tons of CO2 equivalent. So in other words, less quota, more players. So be careful and be conscious of what you have and make sure that your imports are covered. Uh, we can go to the next slide, which is about CBAM. This is a regulation which has been introduced in October uh, last year and requires quarterly reporting. Mainly, um, there are different types of uh, materials which are in scope, but the most important ones for uh, the companies that are affected by the efficacy regulation is iron, aluminium, steel, cast iron, and so forth. There is the link for the regulation in case you, you want to have a look at it. We can move to the next slide. And one of the most common mistakes that are made is uh, to classify the products incorrectly. Now, what you see on the screen is a screw. Many companies that are importing, let's say, air conditioning equipment, they tend to treat this one as the part of the air conditioning equipment, therefore dodging, in a way, the obligation to report under CBAM. But in reality, this screw must be classified as a screw. And if it's made of uh, a metal, aluminium, uh, iron, and uh, steel and so forth, it automatically falls into the remit of the CBAM regulation. So we strongly recommend to do a health check in terms of are you really sure that you're using the correct tariff codes in, in the process? We can move to the next one. This is a list of uh, some of the tariff codes which are in scope. So if you are using them, you are automatically in scope of the regulation. And this is the timeline of the regulation. If you move to the next slide, um, it was published in May 2023. It entered into force on the 1st of October 2023. First reporting deadline was January the 31st. And in 2025, there will be a new uh, method to calculate the environmental impact of the products that are imported. And it gets more and more complicated until you reach the threshold of 2026, where you need to have carbon credits to cover your imports, and they are expensive. Um, that's pretty much it. If you go to the next slide, it, it touches base about the penalties, which there will be penalties also for uh, uh, the CBAM regulation. And I don't know if there is sufficient time, but if you move to the next slide, there are if you have questions, you you can you can you can ask them.
Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Akshay, so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we hope we were able to address some pressing issues regarding FCAS and also touch upon CBAM. And uh, as mentioned, for any further questions, queries, clarifications whatsoever, please feel free to get back to us and uh, we wish you a pleasant day ahead. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Cheers.